Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the word of God that engages us this morning is the gospel reading from John chapter 1. Please be seated. You can see in your worship folder that the theme I've selected for this sermon is called Be an Echo of Jesus. I got this idea because of a poster that I saw in Times Square. It's a longer poster, but it's a short one. It wouldn't have been helpful to bring it, but it hangs right over by the foosball table and the pinball machine. If you're ever looking for it, I invite you to go to Times Square if you've never been in there to see the different posters we have there, the space that we have there to do youth ministry. And Next time we have a function to go and, and check out the things there, which the next function is on Monday, tomorrow night, with an open house from 6 to 8 with uh, Greg Holt. It says he'll be having Cambodia food and sharing about his ministry. You can see the poster that's over there. And what that poster is from is a national youth gathering in New Orleans, Louisiana. And actually that poster has four banners on it. They're condensed banners, but they are banners that were used at that National Youth uh, Convention there in New Orleans this past summer that talked about different themes and uh, different scripture readings and, and pointed the youth to Jesus. And one of those banners said, or has printed on it, be an echo of Christ's humility. Their text was Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. To count others more significant to your, uh, than yourselves. To go and serve your neighbor in humility and love. And, and that banner was used to help the children go and serve the people of New Orleans, Louisiana. To be an echo of Jesus. I couldn't help but to think of that poster when I was reading our text from John chapter 1. Because here in John chapter 1, Jesus is calling us as his children to be an echo of Jesus. Now we know what an echo is, right? Just to be clear, it's when something makes a sound in some place, and that sound travels through the air until it is reflected off something. That's what we see taking place in our text. We hear God's word being echoed by people. And it begins with John the Baptist. John the Baptist, the one who, who was the last prophet, who prepared the way for the Lord to make his path straight. That's what John recalls. Now the writer of the gospel is John the Disciple. The one whom Jesus loved. It's not John the Baptist, but he tells us about John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is the one who prepared the way for Jesus, but John did not know Jesus. Our text makes that clear. In verse 31, John the Baptist says, I myself did not know him. And he repeats himself. Verse 31, John the Baptist says again, I myself did not know him, but, the verse continues, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. You see, God told John the Baptist, that the one you see the Spirit descend like a dove, unrest on him, that one is my son, whom I love, in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. And John bore witness to that event when the Spirit descended in the form of the dove. And John echoed that word. We hear it in our text. Verse 35. The next day, again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And as John echoed those words, there are two disciples who are standing next to John, and they turn from following John, and they follow 
Jesus. And one of those disciples' name is Andrew. And what does Andrew do? He goes and he finds his brother Simon, who Jesus calls Peter, Simon Peter. And he says, we have found the Messiah. And we see God's word echoing through his people. From God, to John the Baptist, to the disciples, Andrew, to Simon. And from generation to generation, God's word continues to be echoed amongst his people so that is the church we have today. We are here because God's word has echoed into our hearts and our ears and our lives. So who echoed God's word in your life? Grandparents? Parents? Friends, neighbors, God's disciples that wrote down God's word and holy scripture that we may read it, that it may echo in our lives. You see, God's word is echoed from generation to generation, even today to his church. In God's church, his kingdom continues to grow because of the echo of his word. So God's calling us today in his word to go and be an echo. <laughs> I guess that's the easy part, isn't it? The tough part is to be an echo of Jesus. Remember, an echo is when there is a sound in some place, somewhere that travels through the air and it is reflected off something. What's the echo, people, here in your lives? Is it the echo of Jesus' word? Or is it the echo of this world? <coughs> so often our lives don't echo Jesus' words, and Jesus' light. More often, our lives echo the things of this world, and there's plenty of things to echo in this dark and sinful world. The words we use don't echo words of Jesus. No, they echo words of sin and darkness. Words that don't always honor the Lord's name. Words that don't always build people up or encourage one another, but words that are harsh and cut right to the heart. <coughs> but maybe it's not the words that echo in your life. Maybe it's the actions that echo the things of this world. The sinful, destructful things. Destructive things. The things that tear people down the things that hurt our neighbor and help ourselves. What's the echo that people hear in your life? So often the echoes of our lives don't reflect Jesus. And yet what God teaches us in our text is that his word has come to us because someone has echoed that word in our lives. And we go and we hear that word and it is reflected off of us to show people Jesus. To show them his light and his life and the blessings that Jesus comes to give. That's what's recorded in our text. We read a text like John chapter 1 and it seems like it's just an account of scripture that helps us understand and know how how Jesus got these disciples and these followers and these people who want to follow him as, as rabbi, as teacher. But Jesus gives us more than just a description of how people became his disciples and followers. No, in this text, Jesus gives us and points us to the blessings that he gives for being his disciple and his followers. Blessings that we have received as God's children. Blessings that are still promised to us as his children. Blessings that don't just keep 
here for people who come to worship, but for the whole world. And it's echoed in our lives. And how is that described? It's described in the conversation that Jesus has with these disciples of John. The disciples of John who heard John echo the words of God who said, Behold the Lamb of God. And these disciples turned and followed Jesus. And Jesus asked them, What are you seeking? And they, they ask a question. We hear it in verse 35 when they say, Where are you staying? It's a question that people even ask today. Maybe not in these words, but where... Where is God? Or where was God when this happened? Or where was God to stop this from taking place? Or where is he? It's the same question of these disciples. And to answer, we've got a Christmas hymn that answers the question. From heaven above to earth I call. Jesus came from heaven above in the form of a little baby born in Bethlehem in this earth to walk on this earth in our place. That's what the disciples see in Jesus. God's son taking on the form of a man. Walking in their midst. And after his death and resurrection, he ascended into heaven. And where is he staying? He's staying in his father's house, in his mansion, where there are many rooms. And that's where he is until he comes back to call us home. Until he returns. He's living in his father's house with lots of rooms. And to answer this question of the disciples when they say, where are you staying? Listen to what Jesus says. Jesus says in verse 36, come and you will see. Come and see. He doesn't give some complicated answer. He doesn't give some long description of, oh, I'm at so-and-so's place. He doesn't describe it. He doesn't say, oh, you go to the corner at that house and you turn left and you go down two blocks and it's that, that stucco one right over there. No, he keeps it simple. And he says, come and see. And in that answer, it's an invitation. An invitation to come to Jesus' house. To come to his home and see. That's the invitation that we have. To come into God's house and see the blessings of our Lord. It's an invitation that Jesus has for God's kingdom in John chapter 14, verse 2 where he talks about God's mansion with many rooms, and he says, I go to prepare a place for you. It's an invitation. Where he has a room prepared for you in God's kingdom. It's an, an invitation to come into God's presence, into the presence of Jesus. Not just to see it. Not just to visit no, it's a place prepared for you, and in Jesus, we find rest. Jesus makes that clear in Matthew chapter 10. Come to me, and you will find rest. Isn't that the invitation we have heard? And isn't that rest of Jesus what we are experiencing now in God's house? On this earth, we have come into the Lord's home by his invitation. He has prepared this place for us to rest in him. And that's what we do in worship. We rest in the presence of Jesus. We are refreshed by the words of our Lord. 
We are strengthened in his home. And so we hear that invitation and respond by faith and rest with Jesus. That's what the disciples did. They hear this invitation of Jesus and an invitation to come and see his home. An invitation that's for us and all people. And you hear what the text says? The middle of verse 39 says, So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day. They stayed with Jesus in his home, in his rest. Jesus didn't just give a quick view. Oh, here's my room, and here's the kitchen, and here's everything else. No, they stayed. And that's the promise for us as God's children. That's the promise for the people of this world. As Jesus goes to prepare a place for you, to prepare a place for all people, it's an invitation not just to see his house. No, it's an invitation to stay for eternity in the presence of Jesus, in his home, in his peace. In his rest, we have that promise for eternity because of Jesus, who is the Lamb of God, Jesus, who came from heaven above to earth below to take on our sin and die our death on the cross that we may be forgiven in him. And it is that forgiveness, it is his resurrected life that is promised to us for eternity. It's the joy we find and reminded of every Sunday as we come into his house and we are refreshed and renewed in him that being fed with God's word, we go and echo that word to the world. So go. <laughs> Be an echo of Jesus in this world. What's that look like? It looks like what we support as a church by sending a Manitoba care team to share the love and light of Jesus to people who are struggling. It looks like supporting missionaries like Greg Holtz and others that we know of so that they may go and spread that word and echo the word that they've heard, but it even comes closer to home as we echo these words of Jesus in our lives. And it can be something as simple as this. When you hear somebody say, after they've hurt you or bumped into you or did something, and they say, I'm sorry, instead of echoing the words of this world by saying, it's okay, don't worry about it, we echo Jesus' words. I forgive you. I forgive you just as Jesus forgives me. And we are an echo of Jesus. Or maybe we are the ones who have said something or did something that, that offended someone else and we echo Jesus not by, not by pushing it aside or ignoring it or hope the person didn't notice or, or doesn't want to bring it up. No, we echo Jesus by following his word in, in Matthew chapter 18 and going and talking with them individually. And confessing our sins, as we're told in 1 John chapter 1, the same confession we used in worship. As we go to them and say, I have sinned against you. I hurt you. I spoke words against you. I did something. Please forgive me. And by acknowledging our sin, by confessing our sin, we echo what Jesus has taught us to say. But maybe, maybe we don't think we've got the courage to be able to echo these words of Jesus. That's okay. We can still echo what he has taught us in prayer. Jesus says, when you pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, and even in prayer, 
we echo Jesus. You see, as we read this text of Jesus calling his disciples, as the disciples hearing this word of God, we see God's word echoed from God himself to John and the disciples, the brothers. It's also a call to us to go and echo this word to the world so that all people can hear these words of invitation for Jesus. Come and see that the Lord is good. In his name, amen. Now may the peace which surpasses our understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.